Here we go. If you're anything like me, then your life is a constant cycle of just watching The Office on loop. As soon as the series ends, it's right back to the beginning to start all over again. When you've seen the show as many times as I have, you start to notice some things. Whether it's piecing together Creed's backstory, or figuring out exactly what Ryan's job is, there's a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to our faves over at Dunder Mifflin. Perhaps the most fascinating realization I uncovered, though, is that mild-mannered paper salesman Jim Halpern actually wrote the whole series. Or at least, that's what the show is about. You can unfurrow that brow of yours now, I'll explain. While it might seem like the show is a mock documentary following the day-to-day -day operations of a mundane paper company, it's actually all the brainchild of one disgruntled and pretty terrible employee. In the show, Jim is always the coolest character of the bunch. He's funny, he's popular, and everybody seems to like him. However, the reality of the situation is that Jim Halpert is is actually just a slacker who's bad at his job and spends all of his time writing a silly series about himself and his co-workers instead of actually doing any work. How do you explain the fact that he always gets what he wants and things always seem to go his way? In the show, he's constantly goofing off and pulling pranks, yet still makes a decent living and is never even reprimanded? And how do you explain why he's always so cool in every situation and handles everything perfectly when the rest of the characters in the show are all depicted as crazy people? The root of this theory is actually from the original UK version of the show, where the entire concept is derived from. That show was created and written by Ricky Gervais, who has stated publicly in the past that he wrote the role of Tim as himself and drew from his own personal experiences. He, of course, played the role of Brent, so people barely know noticed the correlation. When the show got adapted for American audiences, the Brent character was turned into Michael Scott, and the Tim character that's based on Ricky was made into Jim Halpert. So not only was Jim based on the actual creator of the original series, but there's so much evidence throughout the series that points to the whole thing being some sort of weird fantasy of his. Let's start by looking at his co-workers. While Jim is depicted as a pretty regular guy, his co-workers are all off-the-wall nuts. It's almost as if they're caricatures of actual people. And the crazier ones are clearly the ones that the real Jim dislikes the most. Take Michael, for example. He's portrayed as a buffoon who longs for Jim's friendship. Jim, on the other hand, comes off carefree and nonchalant about his boss's adoration of him, but Michael is painted as a loser and, frankly, an idiot. I bet that's because the real Jim isn't so fond of his real boss, who probably gets on his back for being so terrible at his job. People always love to complain about their superiors and call their bosses names, but it's rarely in this over-the-top kind of fashion. This is clearly a representation of Jim's resentment towards his boss Michael, and not an actual one. I mean, there isn't a human being alive who would do some of the stupid things Michael Scott has done in the show. Driving your car into a lake because the GPS said to turn? That's just not humanly possible. Nobody on Earth would make that mistake. Jim must have been extra upset with his boss on that day to come up with such an extremely embarrassing scenario. And don't even get me started on the whole George Foreman grill fiasco. You burned your foot on a Foreman grill. Then there's Jim's co-worker, Dwight Schrute. Throughout the series, the pair are sort of frenemies. In early seasons, they rarely see eye to eye. They're constantly butting heads and Jim is always pranking Dwight without any repercussions. Simultaneously, Dwight is the most successful salesperson in the branch and perhaps even the entire company, as well as a successful businessman who owns the building the office is located in and owns and operates his own beet farm and bed and breakfast. It would make sense why Jim would resent him and portray him as such a weirdo and a loser. Jim probably holds quite a bit of anger towards his co-worker and is jealous of all of his success in life, so he writes him the way that he does. He feels insecure compared to Dwight's successful track record and hardworking attitude, and resorts to pranking him in order to make him look like a fool. That's if the pranks are even real. I mean, some of them are just so absurd that there's no way they could have actually happened. They have to be a figment of someone's bored imagination. Training Dwight to respond to the sound of a computer shutting down like he's Pavlov's dogs? 
or running a cable all the way up a telephone pole? Jim even somehow convinces Dwight that he's being recruited by the CIA. These are all far cries from putting a stapler in some jello. In fact, the relationship between Michael and Dwight is portrayed as a turbulent one in the show. They're always together and they're always up to something, but it's written as though Michael dislikes Dwight and instead wishes he could be friends with Jim. Of course Jim would frame it this way. In reality, the actual boss Michael probably adores his star employee and I bet they get along famously. Jim is such a bad employee that even in the show it affects the day-to-day -day success of the branch. During the season finale of season 2, in an episode called Casino Night, we see Jan tell Michael that his Scranton branch is ranked number 4 out of the 5 branches that she oversees and that they aren't doing very well at all. Following that episode, after Jim makes a move on Pam and gets turned down, he transfers to another branch. He eventually rejoins the Scranton branch in episode 8 of season 3. By the end of season 3, Michael's in the running for a promotion with corporate, and the branch is the best performing one in the company. It took just 8 episodes for them to completely turn the ship around and start running smoothly. See what happens when this guy isn't constantly pulling pranks, hitting on the receptionist and distracting everyone? That's the impact that Jim has. The best example of Jim constantly getting away with delinquent behavior is Toby's box of complaints. In an episode titled Conflict Resolution, which aired as the 21st episode of the second season, Dwight discovers that his stack of complaints against Jim that he's been consistently filing with HR hasn't even been logged. He was told that all of his formal complaints were going to a special file being kept in New York, when really they were just being stashed away in a cardboard box under Toby's desk. Now why would a trained HR professional and someone who takes their job seriously throughout the rest of the series and is thorough about their work not file that many valid complaints? Clearly something is fishy here. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Jim torments Dwight day in and day out, yet the person in charge of human resources just chooses to ignore the issue altogether and totally chooses a side on the conflict? That doesn't add up at all. In fact, Toby is another prime example of evidence that Jim was writing the show all along. At the beginning of the series, Toby is depicted as a relatively normal person. Sure, he's a bit mopey, but he's fine. This is probably because the real Jim barely knows him in real life. However, as the series progresses, and the actual people probably got to know each other a lot more, the Toby character gets more and more sad and depressing. Clearly the real Jim develops a dislike for the real Toby, and decides to change the character. It's probably because the real life Jim is awful at his job, never working and always writing these silly stories, and ends up getting in a lot of trouble with HR in reality. I could see the HR rep being a real pain in the butt to a guy who doesn't want to do anything at work other than type scripts on his computer. The same could be said for Ryan Howard. At the start of the series, it appears as though Ryan is a normal guy, and he and Jim actually kind of get along pretty well. However, the more Jim gets to know him, the crazier and worse the Ryan character becomes. Eventually, his story spirals completely out of control, and by the end of the show he's a complete and utter joke, and a far cry from the person that he was in season 1. Jim writes him as a drug addict, a failure, a laughingstock, and a pretentious jerk. The real Ryan Howard is probably a great guy that the real Jim has grown to resent more and more over time. It's not just these specific characters I've mentioned either. Every single character is a totally augmented version of an actual person. Just think about Creed, Meredith, Kelly, Kevin, and Angela, and how exaggerated their personas are. Jim is clearly emphasizing the extremes of their personalities, and almost always the negative aspects. He very rarely focuses on any of their redeeming qualities or paints anyone in a positive light. They're always made to appear dumb or rude or judgmental or just flat out weird. As if all of that evidence wasn't enough, here's the real cherry on top. You know that footage of Scranton, Pennsylvania from the show's intro credit sequence? Apparently, that footage actually belongs to actor John Krasinski and was taken on his personal camera during a trip to Pennsylvania to research the role. So Jim literally filmed the intro himself. What do you think? Is this theory possible or is it complete and utter garbage? Let's hear from you in the comment section down below. We always love to hear your thoughts. Before you go, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Until next time, bye!